This is the first video of our series where we're going to introduce some of the basic concepts of continuous delivery and DevOps. We'll go into some of the history of where these concepts came from. We'll talk about the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment, two terms that are often interchanged but should not be. And we'll introduce you to the concept of a deployment pipeline. In this video, we'll start with how Agile and Lean drove the need to deliver software more often, and then move on to talk about continuous delivery and DevOps. The Agile movement formalized several practices that were meant to enable organizations to deliver small pieces of functionality more often. One of the primary benefits of this was meant to be the ability to adjust the path taken by the development organizations with changing understanding of the needs. Development teams using these practices build small pieces of useful functionality which would be demonstrated to users on a regular basis, usually no more than every couple weeks. It is commonly said in Agile teams that the only real measure of progress is working software. But by what definition of working? We can showcase features to a product owner, but the software was still rarely actually released to end users. To enable the project management methodologies introduced by Agile, a collection of technical practices was introduced about the same time. These practices are often referred to as XP, or extreme programming. One of the most important in the journey to continuous delivery is continuous integration. Continuous integration, or CI, is a development practice that requires developers to integrate code into a shared repository several times a day. Each check-in is then verified by an automated build, and then feedback allows teams to detect problems early. Practicing CI requires quite a bit of automation, especially around testing itself. We'll go more into some of the more common types of testing in another video. With solid CI practices in place, you gain confidence in the quality of your code, at least in your development environments. It's important to note, solid CI practices are a prerequisite to continuous delivery. So going back to our Agile organization. Teams implementing these practices of delivering smaller pieces of functionality are often seen as a threat to traditional IT operations, even with solid continuous integration. The thought of having to do production releases that have historically not been reliable justifiably scares people who have been involved with the deployment marathons. This fear resulted in walls being built between development and operations. All too often, moving the software along the process takes the form of being thrown over the wall to a separate QA group for additional testing or an IT operations group for deployment to production. The group now responsible for deploying the software has other things they are working on, so the deployment schedule is determined by when people can do the work instead of when the business needs the software. Continuous integration doesn't typically include deployment to a production-like environment. Often teams will work in an incremental or even iterative fashion to create new features, but that software doesn't get outside the team's limited scope until someone else declares it ready to move on. One of the biggest drivers towards continuous delivery is the way it combats this problem. Automating deployment of your software on a regular basis to a production-like environment, or even production itself, makes those deployments far less risky. There are significant benefits to many other parts of the business as well. We recommend the book Continuous Delivery by former thought workers Jez Humble and David Farley for in-depth examples. In Continuous Delivery, we add automated deployment and testing on production-like environments. Every build is run through something we call a deployment pipeline, which we'll talk about in more detail in the next video. In addition to automating all of the things, it's very likely that you'll need to modify the way you write the application code itself. Features which are incomplete need to be hidden from the user interface until they are ready for users. The goal here is to ensure that the software can be deployed at any time simply by clicking the deploy button. The deployment itself has been tested over and over so we have complete confidence in the technology. When to deploy value to customers is a business decision, not a technical constraint. With continuous deployment, there is no human interaction at all after code commit. If all of the tests pass, it gets deployed to production immediately. I believe there is no difference in what gets tested between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Some would disagree and say continuous deployment is more rigorous. Continuous deployment is a great option for systems that you completely control, such as web-based applications. It's not as attractive for systems that need to be installed by end users. Ultimately, you need to decide what is an acceptable rate of change for your business when deciding if continuous delivery or continuous deployment should be your goal. As you've seen, continuous delivery and continuous deployment are technical practices. They are often used interchangeably with the term DevOps, but should not be. 
The key word in the definition you're seeing now is culture. DevOps is not a set of engineering practices, and it's definitely not a job title or role. This video series is focused on continuous delivery and deployment, but you should know that adopting a DevOps culture is important to your success. Thank you for watching this part of our video series. Be sure to check out part two where we'll go in more into depth on the types of automated testing popular in deployment pipelines.